Hi, this is Becky, and I want to provide you with some information on the very beginning steps at creating your digital portfolio. As you can see, I'm already at the website we're going to use, www.weebly.com, and I'm going to create a free account. I'll type in my full name, my email. and a password and it would be a good idea for me to write these two pieces of information down actually I'd even write down the website and what my username and password is if I have a smartphone I might use an app for helping me keep track of my usernames and passwords so I'm going to go ahead and click sign up it's free And I'm not going to save my password for this site because there may be other students on the same computer, so I don't want anyone else to access my Weebly account. So I'm going to build a site, so I'm going to select that option, and next I'm going to choose a theme. And when selecting a theme for an employment portfolio, I want it to be nice, professional, I want the colors to be very pleasing to my eye. I want to stay away from red lettering or even a red background. What is really nice about some of these is that may, I may even like the design of this, but maybe the profession that I'm pursuing has nothing to do with recording or broadcasting, those types of things. So I can select this design and then later I can edit this photo and upload something else that I like. I can switch that out. If I were entering the medical profession, I may want to switch out the photo for a picture of myself in scrubs. So you do have some options as far as modifying your design. But always keep in mind that this is from the view of the employer. When you're making selections, how do you want the potential employer to view your portfolio? I like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. This is an important step as far as using a subdomain of Weebly. This is the free option where I actually create my own site. These other options, you need to pay for those. The difference is when you have your own domain name is you'll actually have .com at the end. So maybe I want to title this fake example. Oh, so someone's already taken that one. Let me try demonstration. Let's see. Ah, I want that one too. What demo? Demo for students. We finally got lucky. So when I do select what I want the subdomain to be, I do not want this to be especially long. When you have a long name, you run the risk of someone making a misspelling or typing error when they are typing in your website. So nice and short is good. An ideal name might also be my initials and the word portfolio. But again, you want to keep this very professional and keep it short too. So I'm going to go ahead and select continue. And you can see here's a nice little video tutorial. If you want to watch that, you can after you create your account. I'm going to skip it for the time being.